Hello and welcome to this tutorial about templates. In the new version of SensorView, the version 1.9, we have the possibility of applying templates to single or multiple files. Let's check it out. Okay, so we're going to review two specific cases, okay, for, for these templates. The first one is going to be roughness analysis, and the second one is going to critical dimensions. So actually, um, here we have a folder with a lot of different topographies in which we want to calculate roughness. So we can randomly choose one, okay, for example, this one, okay. This would be a sample from additive manufacturing. And in here, what we want to do is first of all, apply a leveling. Then we're going to apply a threshold in which we're going to eliminate 0.1 in the minimum and the same in the maximum, okay? Actually, here we can see the preview and what it was eliminated. And then we're going to apply a restore that if you remember, we have a shortcut that is Control R. Okay, so those are all the filters that I wanted to apply. And now we're going to see what are the, the default roughness measurements that we have, which are here. So actually I want to calculate more than height parameters. I want to calculate functional parameters. I want to calculate hybrid parameters and spatial parameters. So once we have added all those different parameters, here we can see that the software is going to calculate all of them. So now that we have everything, we're going to go to this part of the screen and we see here a new icon that is going to be related to the templates. So let's actually click and say save as template. We're going to say roughness. And then once we save it, it appears this pop-up, okay, which is going to be a wizard that is going to help us to apply the templates. So here in this part, okay, in the left part, we're going to see the characteristics of the plux file from the template. Then in here, everything that we have applied, either operators, annotations in the 2D and annotations on the profile, okay? Then we would go to the part of apply to. So actually we can apply it to a single sample or multiple samples. In our case, we're going to select the option of multiple samples and we're going to go to that folder in which we were finding all those roughness parameters that now have been loaded in the right part of the screen in which we see all the files in which we're going to apply the templates as well as the filters and things that we are applying, okay? So now that we have everything, the template and the files loaded, we can say run. And you can see that if the filters were applied, we are going to see a check, okay? And then we can, in this icon here, we can check out if indeed it was applied. So we can just click yes. And a new window is going to open and we have all the operators here and all the roughness parameters in, in here as well. All those operators are saved. So for example, if we access through the folder, okay, we go to roughness and then I open another one. I'm going to see that the operators again and the roughness parameters are applied. Okay, so this is about roughness. Then we have critical dimensions. So let's go and open our file for critical dimensions, which is this one. And when it comes to do a template for critical dimensions, there are a few things that we need to take into consideration. But the first one is that the feature of interest needs to be in a very similar place to the original plux that we're using for the template, okay? So uh, we're going to do some critical dimensions on the contour, so we're going to do the distance between here and here and we're going to use the automatic edge detection and we're going to drag. It's important to do as big as possible the dragging area because it means that in that area we're going to look for the line, okay? So we have more chances to actually detect it. In this case we're not going to do it very big because otherwise we would detect this line here. Then we do the same for the below one. And again, we want to calculate those two dimensions too. So we drag and have this area of detection. And once we have our critical dimensions, again, we go to the icon and we say save as template. We're going to use this same name. 
And then we, we have the same window open after saving. So in this case, what we are applying, it's not operators, but annotations in the 2D. Okay, so here we can see that we have two dimensions in here. Then uh, for critical dimensions, we're going to talk about options of alignment. But in the uh, typical case in which is measuring a feature of interest with the same magnification, we don't need to touch any of this, okay? It's going to work out regardless the option that we have. Uh, in the following part of the video, we're going to review in which cases this is going to be important or it's going to be interesting. So we actually don't care about that. And again, we go to multiple. This is the folder that we actually are going to, to review. And in here we have a couple of different files with the same feature. So, okay, we can run. And it's important to understand that actually this check means that we applied the critical dimensions, but it doesn't mean that it applied it in the place that we wanted. So actually, for example, we can open number seven. And in number seven, we can see that this dimension here was quite correct, well, it was a little bit shifted, okay? But then the second, the second dimension was not too good. So actually, you can see that it's a little bit shifted and the area of detection, it doesn't take that into consideration. So we're going to, we can manually fix this. Okay. So you can see that indeed it has like to be quite the same position. Okay, it's, it's quite important. We're going to open another one and see if it worked. And actually for number six, it does look like it worked pretty well. Okay. Then uh, we're going to review the alignment options. So actually we're going to start with this option here. Okay. And which this is interesting when it comes to, we have measured a feature of interest with a magnification, and then we have measured the same feature with another magnification. So we actually are going to put an example of that. Okay, so for this sample, we're going to do the same critical dimensions. We're going to calculate the linear dimension. And in here we can drag quite a lot because we don't have that much li as a limitation as in the other sample. And again, so now we have more area to actually detect the line, okay? As much as, as this gray area is. Okay, once we have that, again, same procedure, we go here, save as a template, and we can say square. So now in this case, if we actually use um, another option that it's not this one, okay, for example, this one, and we put the 20x, you're going to see that what it's going to happen is that the proportion of the dimension is going to be maintained and it's, it's not going to adapt to the feature, okay? So actually if we run and we have a look, so what happens, okay, is that the proportion that we drew, it's going to be maintained, but it's not going to adapt to the, the new pixel size that the sample has. So in those specific cases, if we actually use adjust to sample size, now this, this proportion is going to adapt to the new pixel size, and then it's going to have the right, um, the right size. So now let's check it out and see how it does work out. And now in this case, it works out perfect. Then we have and the other option that it's preserved uh, template size that it's going to be interesting when we have, for example, a field of view and then we measure a feature and then that same feature, we want to measure it in a stitching. Okay. So we're going to go and look for an exa example of this. So for example, imagine the case of these two holes. So we want to know the radius. So let's go and do a radius and then do the area. And same for the second hole and do a big area. Okay, once we have that, we save as a template. We say circle. And now we're going to actually want to apply this template to uh, stitching. 
So actually in this case we click preserve template size and in here we can we can say in which part of the uh, stitching we're going to apply the template. So for example we can say bottom left, save and close and then we are going to look for that measurement, that extended measurement and we're going to run it. So now when we open it we have a stitching and we see that we have applied the measurement to the area that we were selecting. Okay, so those would be like the cases, special, special cases in which you need to take into consideration this alignment. Otherwise, you, you don't need to touch it. Okay, and this is pretty much it about this tutorial of templates. I hope you liked it and I recommend you to stay tuned to the new versions of SensorView because we're going to have more and more automatization in those templates. See you in following videos. Bye bye. That's Sensafar, lighting up your quality.